Hi, everyone, and welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I am a bereavement specialist. And we are here today with Susan and a guest. So hi, Susan. Hi, Lisa. I'm so excited about today's show. Very important. My name is Susan Caperso. I'm an end of life doula and legacy specialist. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. But today, let's introduce our guest. It's a pleasure to introduce Adam Rabinovich. He is the executive director of COPE for the past five years. This is a nonprofit grief and healing organization dedicated to helping parents and families living with the loss of a child. And both of us, both Susan and I, have been um, workshop facilitators, and we've been grateful for the opportunity to give something back to the incredible organization that you have. So welcome, Adam. Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you Thank for you, being Lisa. here Thanks today. You, Susan. Appreciate it. I'd like to start with a little bit about you. How did you get involved with this organization and, and all that? Uh, yeah, thank you for that opportunity to share a bit about my own journey and how it's uh, connected with the, the work that I lead at COPE. Um, so you're right, Lisa, just about five years ago from when we're recording this, um, in 2018, I was looking for my next professional chapter. Uh, I've been a nonprofit leader for um, much of my career. Before that, I was in the private sector. And I learned about this organization called COPE, which at that point had been doing amazing work for 20 years. Um, now in 2024, we're in our 25th year of impact. And as I was learning more about the mission that you just highlighted uh, to support and help parents and families living with the loss of a child, I recognized quickly, although I didn't quite get the depth of the connection until I really got to know the work and get involved with the families that we support, that my family is also in this club that no one wants to belong to. And what I mean by that is that... Um, 40 plus years ago, when I was a kid living in the suburbs of New York, uh, my parents uh, had uh, my sister, Marnit, who was born ill and died uh, ill and young. And uh, our family has lived with that loss for 40 plus years in our own way. And so getting to know not only the vision of uh, COPE that I share, which is that no one needs to grieve alone, but also to be able to connect on the personal, almost molecular level with so many family members who are um, on their own grief journeys has been some of the most meaningful, purposeful, and nourishing work that I've done. So uh, I bring that personal connection every day to the families that uh, that COPE supports. Wow. 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 Thank you for that. Thanks. That's uh, very inspiring. Um, it is. And by the way, I think about my grandmother mm. who lost her daughter when my biological mother was 26 and I was two. Wow. And in the 50s, there was nothing like this. There was certainly no support for anyone. Um, and I don't know how she handled it. I know the whole family uh, was devastated. It was an accident. It was it was a car crash. Um, and so a uh, very difficult time. And I lived with that, by the way, my whole life, because I had to be sort of the daughter she lost and the granddaughter I was. So that was sort of my legacy. Very, very challenging. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, and you remind me an important takeaway that I've had um, from the last uh, few years of getting to uh, work with COPE and work with so many people, including you, Lisa, and you, Susan, uh, in partnership is that Decades ago, at least uh, in the community where I grew up and where my parents uh, 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 were living, there was no resource for them like COPE uh, or uh, the work that you do. So um, it's, it's particularly meaningful to know that today for the families that inevitably need grief and healing support, there's a lot more resources uh, out there. So for any listeners who are uh, looking for a little extra support or want to share with someone in their life, just know that there are lifelines out there, including COPE and lots of other community resources. So do reach out and uh, and get some support and connect with others. Yeah. Yeah. We'd love to more learn so more. now yeah. than ever. That's right. That's right. Yeah. We'd yeah. love to learn more about the programs. Oh. Tell us about the programs yes. that you have. So we, we offer um, uh, a few different uh, wraparound services, I'll call them for family members, and I'll uh, try and be clear and, and succinct and please uh, ask me any clarifying questions. Um, we offer a whole array of clinically facilitated peer support groups. And what I mean by that is we um, create safe and welcoming spaces, both in person and online, 
for peers to come together with a common loss. And in each one of those rooms, whether they're um, in a community space or virtually online in a safe and secure space, we have a licensed clinician who's facilitating the group dynamic and the group healing. And so we offer those for parents who are living with the loss of a child in some cases, moms and dads coming together with a, a common journey. We also offer those kinds of support groups for bereaved adult siblings living with the loss of a brother or sister. And we have even a, a, a teen and young adult uh, online support group for mm -hmm. uh, young adults living with the loss of a, a loved one, someone significant to them. So those are our support groups in a nutshell. We also offer, and I can speak uh, so highly of, of both uh, Lisa and, and Susan's work firsthand as uh, professional facilitators for our healing workshops. So um, several times a month, at least, we offer a variety of, of healing workshops for a broad base of community members who are grieving, healing, also professionals will join. Uh, we do everything from uh, yoga to mindfulness to arts and drama and dance, even any healing modality that we think or believe can help people connect to their own journey and, and, and their own healing and to connect to others. So all of those are offered in a communal setting. And the third area, which uh, I'm proud to, to highlight is our Camp Erin NYC, which is an annual bereavement camp for kids. It happens each August. And as I'm talking to you now in uh, early April, 2024, registration is open for uh, kids, teens, and their parents or caregivers to join us. All of our programs are free of charge. And uh, I know you'll be sharing with your audience uh, best ways to get connected. And so I'll just offer up that through our website at copefoundation.org, people can learn more about and get involved with our support groups, our healing workshops, and our camp. So what's wow. the age of the camp? Uh, I'm interested in that. What's the age of the camp uh, kids so the, and stuff? The, the kids and teens that we, we welcome are 7 to 17. And then uh, in so, some of the programs throughout the, the experience, it's a long weekend at the end of August at a beautiful healing wow. summer camp in the Pocono Mountains near mm -hmm. where Pennsylvania and New York touch. Um, they're also uh, um, integrated into groups by uh, similar ages. So in terms of development, uh, and each of those have licensed clinicians as well involved who are volunteers in our program. Uh, and then we offer a concurrent parent and caregiver retreat also facilitated by professionals. So those are for uh, adults uh, to have their own healing uh, retreat and experience. Wow. Wow. And there's no charge for this. That's correct. Yeah. All of our programs are, are designed to be free of charge and accessible to as many people uh, as uh, we can help and support. That's our vision is that no one needs to grieve alone. And as a nonprofit organization, we uh, do a lot of uh, outreach and fundraising to make sure that we can offer uh, that sustainable um, set of programs to uh, anyone who needs it. Wow. And you are privately funded? Yes, we're privately funded thanks to so many donors, individuals and foundations and uh, universities. Uh, so many folks and stakeholders have really stepped up over the last 25 years, including through the pandemic, which was a, a tough uh, environment in so many ways, including um, for philanthropic support. So um, I really uh, appreciate all of the, the, the donors and stakeholders who help us uh, achieve our, our mission every day. Wow. So I have I have a question for you, Adam. You know that I concentrate in my business on legacy legacy work. I've even picked up uh, two days a week helping uh, Brian Tully Tully Law Group in Melville um, bring legacy to his clients, which is really a, a phenomenal thing, you know, in a legacy will. So my question to you is: Is there a specific um, something specific that you're able to do to help families remember and, and honor their child's legacy. Yeah, that's a great, great framing. And thank you for all the work that each of you do to, to make sure that that, um, that legacy is intact and, and lots of people want to tap in in different ways. So we are creating uh, spaces um, where, where people can and do plug in. I'll give a few examples. Um, for any of your listeners who may be in the Long Island, New York area, we uh, host a labyrinth, which is a beautiful contemplative healing space where family members have uh, the names of their loved ones with an inscription engraved on individual bricks that then becomes a communal space with uh, flowers and gardens and 
uh, quiet uh, moments where people can come individually and we host on a regular basis uh, group workshops at that space. So it's really the opportunity for people not only to honor the legacy of their loved ones, but to also when they choose to, to do it in a connected way with others. And then we've replicated to some degree that, that kind of experience virtually. So we offer online memorial walls and places uh, and spaces uh, on the web where people can honor the legacy of their loved one and always do it in a communal way so that people are reminded that no mm. one is in this kind of grief and loss mm. journey alone. That's beautiful. I want to just take a second um, because this was a, a really big video that we did and it touched so many lives and it was about the portal that Lisa knows uh, so much about and she actually has one for her husband. But tell Adam a little bit about that portal. Yeah, so it's an online memorial called the Eternal Portal, and it has templates, which are incredible. So you don't have to be some kind of computer genius to figure out how to put this together. It has backgrounds that you can choose. It has music, uh, virtual pictures, and virtual candles that spin around. Um, it also has flowers. And what's nice about it, it's an ongoing thing. So I made it for my husband and he lives there. You know, that's where people can come and write something about their experience with him. There's a journal that I have in there as well. Um, history and bio and, you know, legacy things. It's really very, it's nurturing and it's wonderful because it, it feels like he's still alive there. It's beautiful. I just wanted to, I wanted to mention that really quick because uh, Lisa had wanted to do a video on, on this portal for a long time. And I kept pushing her off saying, oh, it's, how good could it be? It's not such a big deal. And I have to tell you, we have a video in our library and the whole show was in the portal and she showed us how to use it, what to do. And I just found it Incredible. I said, oh my gosh, we should have done that a long time ago. So that is a, a good support for families as well. It is. It is. Um, yeah. Can you share maybe an impactful or a heartwarming story that, that comes to mind about a particular family maybe that you've, that you've been able to help and support through the years? Yes, um, with honor uh, to, to share one in particular that comes to mind, and it's a timely one also. Um, when we're recording this conversation, uh, again, early April 2024, uh, the evening that we're recording this tonight, we have a special community event and fundraising opportunity, which we host each year, particularly in honor of our Camp Aaron NYC families, uh, also to honor the 25th anniversary of the work that we do. And uh, although we had to hit pause because no one uh, wanted to do bowling during the pandemic, we're back to our annual bowling event. So that's being hosted um, coincidentally when we speak. And right before the pandemic, uh, when we hosted that same event, I think it was 2019, uh, an amazing family. These are two adults, two parents and two kids living with the loss of their child, their, their brother and sister. Um, spoke to the room of a couple of hundred uh, people who were gathered to learn more about the work that we do. Um, some of them had all, also attended the camp or volunteered there. And to hear from mom, dad, brother, and sister, each in their own way of what the experience meant to them individually, and then mm -hmm. the family, they told us that they had, for the first time in their shared grief journey, living with the loss of their their child and their brother and sister, they had some common language, some common tools that they could use as a family unit to move through their grief journey together. So while each individual path is certainly unique, uh, our program, among other resources that they've um, been able to take advantage of, has really helped them uh, heal as a family. So that, per for me, is a particularly powerful and inspirational model that we're using at COPE for more and more family-centered grief and healing support. Nice. Wow. Nice. That, that, I can I can see that as you're, you were speaking. I could see that. And you, you're able to give the families these tools to actually come together versus yeah. families that come apart. And well, we so. can understand why none of us really can imagine this is the worst loss for for, the truth. for me to ever even talk about. This is a hard, hard subject. 
and you're doing great things there. Um, do you have um, any particular key piece of it, advice or thoughts for um, a family who's grieving? Um, just, I don't, I don't know, there's so much, you know, but maybe you're off the top of your head, it's something that w will support a, a grieving family. It's, it's really the most important question in so many ways because grief can be uh, so isolating, so overwhelming. And so the simple but not easy uh, message or advice or um, ask for people is to take a step and uh, get support. And whether that's through COPE and our, our website, copefoundation.org, people can connect with so many resources. There's lots of great community support out there today, including present company in this conversation. Um, but to, to take that step and, and reach out and for a, a lifeline, um, an organization, a, a trusted community resource that can help you. And for the people who care about someone who is grieving because grief inevitably touches all of us um, to offer up some suggestions. And there's some great resources, including one called Speaking Grief, um, which has a lot of tips, both for people who are grieving and also for those who care about grievers. And it helps with some of the language that we all, I'll speak for myself, struggle with sometimes when someone we know is grieving. Um, and uh, th there, there's resources out there today that weren't there for my family 40 plus years ago. So I encourage people to uh, find a way to take that step and um, and uh, hopefully they, that will be um, uh, uh, the right first move for them. Very, very good. Uh, you know, thank you for all of these words. Um, I have two questions for you. One, one is moving forward. Uh, what are your hopes and maybe goals or things that you haven't done mm -hmm. with COPE to this point that you're looking forward to? Great. I appreciate that because, again, as an organization who just turned 25, we have a, a track record behind us and a lot more to accomplish, and we can't do it alone. So community partnerships like the ones we have with both of you are, are critical. So we're, what we're committed to uh, for the next chapter, for the foreseeable future, and for as long as um, we uh, are adding value to, uh, to, to this work, we have three areas that we uh, are, are embarking on. Uh, one is to do more for more kinds of family members. So while, as Lisa uh, highlighted at the beginning, our mission uh, and our origins uh, have been focused on supporting parents and families living with the loss of a child, uh, thanks to both our organic development and some of our strategic development, we're increasingly helping lots of kinds of family members with lots of kinds of losses. So we're looking to do more and more family-centered grief support. Uh, number two is we're looking to do that kind of work increasingly in historically marginalized and underserved communities. And uh, just in the last year or two, through some amazing partnerships, including with Malloy University on Long Island, we've been part of a mobile care clinic, bringing grief and healing support to historically under-resourced communities in downstate New York, specifically on Long Island. So we want to do more for people who uh, may not have the same level of uh, health care access, uh, including mental health and grief support. So we want to be uh, one of the resources available to all kinds of people. And number three is to meet people geographically where there might be gaps in services across New York State and beyond. So uh, we're not here to duplicate any services. Again, there's so many great resources um, that are out there for people uh, across New York and across the country. Um, but if and when we find areas where we're invited in to, to be a partner, uh, we're doing that now in Westchester County, New York, and beyond in our camp, which will uh, happen uh, the last weekend of August, brings families together from across the region. So um, that's the third part of what we're um, looking to do more of. Amazing. You know, one of the wonderful things that came out of the pandemic is everybody's knowledge of Zoom. I, I don't think there's a person that really doesn't know about Zoom or had to hop on a Zoom call or um, anything like that. And so what you're doing, I mean, a lot of these support groups you said, you know, are on Zoom. So it could be a person, a family in California that yeah. hops on yeah. and... The, the, the name of the game is access, absolutely. So we want to be there for anyone who 
needs, deserves, wants that kind of uh, grief and healing support. We want to create the spaces where they're done in communal settings. So people are gathering and they can look around, whether it's on Zoom or in a room in person together at a community center and know that they're not alone. And uh, you, you said it beautifully, Susan, we found a lot of opportunity in that crisis. And so today, when we're recording in April 2024, we're able to provide resources to people both in person and online. Yeah, and I love for the specific um, topics and themes, you know, that you offer a lot of these support groups. And recently, well, not recently, last year at some time, we had on a, a woman whose daughter was brutally murdered. And that's that's a, a mm. niche kind of topic. And if you were able to offer individual, you know, different kinds of groups for people suffering different types of losses, that's that would be amazing. That's a uh, really, really wonderful that you're doing things like that. Um, now, also, I know you from uh, working out of your space in Roslyn, but now um, you're in a couple places. So tell us about that. If people wanted to attend it in person, yep. different types of in-person events, is it still out of that one space or New York City or where? So, so all of the above. So we today have programs uh, across Long Island, New York uh, and in New York City. Um, we have uh, events um, throughout the year, primarily in the same region in person on Long Island and New York City. Uh, our 13th summer of Camp Erin NYC uh, will be hosted in uh, Preston Park, Pennsylvania, in the beautiful Pocono Mountains. Um, so registration is open for that uh, as we speak in April. And um, then we have uh, a, a June golf outing coming up for anyone who might enjoy a day of golf that supports a great cause. So that will be happening in Manhasset at uh, North Hills Country Club on June 3rd. People can get information on our website if they're interested to join us, donate, sponsor. So lots of ways to get involved for grief and healing support and also for so many uh, of the, the family members that we um, have helped and do help the next level of healing for them is helping others. And so they inevitably become donors, volunteers, board members of our nonprofit. So there's a lot of ways uh, to connect and, and build this, uh, this strength of community. And you also Wonderful. have a great partnership with Pine Lawn. The work that you do with Pine Lawn is pretty amazing. I know yeah. that Susan's been in person there and uh, it just sounds incredible the way yeah. you bring people together. Thank you for highlighting that. One of the the most special and I believe largest uh, cemeteries, memorial parks and arboretums on Long Island, if not in, in the region, who uh, is one of our uh, critical community partners. We are in the fourth year of providing uh, monthly grief and healing workshops to um, a, a community of, of grievers and, and loved ones and professionals who join. And so uh, we're continuing to do that as we move through 2024. That's wonderful. I've been involved with them for about three years now. I speak at their lantern release and mm. their candlelight ceremony, and I can't even rave and tell people about these events. They're beautiful. They they fill your heart. They're just extraordinary, the job that they do there. I'm very honored um, to be asked to do that uh, year after year now, so it's been, it's been really nice. Um, it was, I just lost it. I had another question for you. Okay, go ahead, Lisa. Did you have something? No, um, it's interesting because one of the ones that I did was on Mother's Day and Father's Day and observing it. And I got people to think about their own traditions and their own legacies of what they've passed on and what they remember most and how to keep those continuing. Um, and somebody at the end said to me, I didn't realize that there would be other things that I could think about and mm -hmm. that I could pass on and all because a child had died. And she said, you've given me a reason to go on. And that was just so touching. Well, the thank you for providing not only that uh, opportunity for them to share, but also reflecting back. And that um, really crucial uh, element of hope is so, so critical to what we all do and what we all share. So to be able to be part of those moments is, uh, is really humbling and, uh, and it, 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 every day people are showing up. They do take that step that we talked about uh, earlier of, of reaching out for help. And uh, hopefully COPE is, is one of the resources that's providing that kind of 
a hope uh, uh, for their future and their journey. It's okay. huge, you know, and people need you so badly you know yes. they need that type of support because i've come across so many families that that actually disconnect you know through divorce and moves and you know it's a whole mess and we can understand that though you know it's understandable but again keeping that family together you can do that with all the kinds of different support that you offer so yeah. I really am thankful for that. And I appreciate that. And I am constantly telling people about your Me organization. Too. Me too. Me okay. too. Well, again, we can't do it alone. So we we uh, trust and rely on professionals like both of you and so many others who really step up and and uh, and help uh, people move, uh, move through their journey together. So we can't do it alone. None of us can. Exactly. It takes a village. It does. Was there yes. anything else in particular that you were thinking of today that you wanted to share with our audience? I just want to thank you both for the, the work that you do individually, mm -hmm. collectively, um, as we've Oh, you're too sweet. You're this too no, 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 no one can do it alone. Uh, I encourage people um, who are listening, watching, uh, sharing um, to, to reach out uh, for, for those who are grieving and, and looking for some extra support. Uh, copefoundation.org is one place to start. Uh, you can learn more about uh, our programs and also uh, as a community navigator, we can help connect you with other resources uh, that could be valuable for you and your family and for anyone who wants to get involved in the critical life healing work that COPE does, uh, they can also reach out through our website, copefoundation.org, get involved, um, uh, connect with us and uh, and we really- So you look for volunteers. We look for volunteers. We need volunteers. We uh, It's part of the lifeblood of the organization and so many of the uh, family members who have been in our programs uh, inevitably come back and say, I'd like to help other people. Uh, it, it's part of my own grief journey, they might say, and they get involved as volunteers, they get involved as sustaining donors, and it's been a really powerful part of the first 25 years of COPE's legacy, and I expect it will be for uh, the next 25 plus. Oh, that's perfect. And, and yeah, yes. somebody who's been touched by a loss in their life, usually that's the way, you know, um, they come to volunteering. I remember the question. Okay. Yeah. You know, it was there somewhere. So this, this word that I'm using is not correct, um, but I'm thinking of initiation. Um, that's not the right word. But when a family first comes to COPE, uh, is it just a conversation you have on the phone? Do you ask them to come in and meet them? Um, just give give families a little background on how the process is so they can get involved with your- that's, with that's, your... So, that's so important. And one of the things that we really focus on is um, a, a welcoming and um, engaging uh, experience throughout uh, the 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 connection that we have. And some of the families that have been coming to COPE programs have been doing it for years, if not decades, and it's really helped them at each step of their grief journey. So at the beginning of uh, an intake or initiation process, people can reach out. Uh, they'll find uh, both in English and, and in Spanish a an intake form uh, on our website, which has uh, some basic uh, biographical information about them and their loved one uh, or loved ones if, if they're gr grieving multiple uh, family members. And uh, we have a team of uh, clinicians and an amazing clinical and program director and a community uh, outreach manager. These are licensed clinical professionals with a background in bereavement, um, death, dying, uh, grief, and healing, all of the above. So they will uh, uh, welcome a first conversation uh, with the uh, family member, make sure that uh, COPE is the right fit for them at the right time in their journey. Uh, also be able to make other suggestions and connections and uh, provide resources. And then uh, assuming it'll be the right fit for that person, um, they'll be welcomed into a, a, in the case of a peer support group, uh, a support group that then they can join on an open-ended basis. So again, there's no time delineation necessarily for how long a family member can join and does join one of our uh, peer support groups. And then for our workshops, including um, the workshops we offer with Pine Lawn and other community partners, there's often a registration process, which is uh, meant to be brief and inclusive. Um, and then folks can uh, log on and join uh, for online or meet up in person when we have our in-person events as well. And, you know, 
that's beautiful. You just mentioned something that really made the hair on my neck stand because with a lot of bereavement groups, you can only be a part of them for so long, right? They usually right. give you a time period and then, okay, it's time to move on and but they bring new people in. But by saying that it's unended for a family and that they can participate and come to the support groups for as long as they need, that's a beautiful thing. And I'll also mention on the same theme for our Camp Erin, where m many of the uh, campers are first timers, not only first time to a bereavement camp, but for many of them, it's the first time ever having a summer camp experience. So uh, that's meant to be uh, an eye opening and, and hopefully life changing experience as well. Um, we have a, uh, a camp team who interviews and gets to know each family who applies to the program. We have a camp director and a clinical director as well to also make sure that our program is the right fit for that family at that time in their grief journey. So those kinds of getting to know each other, cope getting to know the family, the family getting to know cope is so critical to building uh, that trust and making sure that we are providing the right resource and the right support at the right time uh, in an individual family's grief journey. And I just want to say how valuable mm. the camps are. Yeah, you know, I, I volunteer for a hospice that's on the way east end of Long Island. And that's who they, they cater to, people on the very east end. Mm. And they have a camp, similar camp. And so I hear about it quite often just from being a volunteer with them. And I've never myself volunteered uh, time to be at the camp. It's every August, I believe. That's right. Uh, but the powerful um, ways that it helps these children, it, it stays with them forever. They always remember that camp experience and things that they did there and the groups and, and the activities. And it's really, really helpful for families. So I really appreciate you guys doing that. Where the camp is held in, in Pennsylvania, you said? Help yes, our, our host camp is called Camp Wing, um, and uh, they've been our host for many years. We're fortunate to partner with them, and it's in a community called Preston Park, Pennsylvania. Uh, folks and how from... many? Um, how long is it for? And how many? Um, how many people can be there at one time? The camp itself is a three-day weekend, so we have a camp uh, for the seven to seventeen-year-olds on one side of a beautiful healing reflective lake reflective literally and figuratively and on the other side of uh, of the lake if your listeners can visualize is a, a retreat for the adults parents and caregivers. Oh, uh, mm, there's that's usually, nice. it's, a, it's a it's a very powerful and uh and separate but then integrated experience because when the families reunite at the end of three 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 long but uh hopefully healing days okay. they have these common tools and and language um that we talked a little bit about earlier and uh, in the case of the kids and teenagers, it's usually about 65 to 70 kids or teens uh, with a one-to-one -one mentor uh, ratio. So we uh, try and have a, a volunteer, whether a clinical volunteer or a trained uh, 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 buddy volunteer. And then usually about 30 to 40 parents and caregivers join with a team to support them as well. And then throughout the year, including uh, uh, just this past weekend from when we're recording, we'll have reunions and other uh, get-together programs oh, where, I love uh, that. where former campers, alum can come together. And for many of them, and I think to your point from a moment ago, Susan, for so many of these amazing, resilient kids and teenagers, those experiences are the first time that they're really meeting other people who have lost a, a parent or a brother or sister or uh, someone significant to them. So it's, again, that, that clear uh, message that they're not alone in their mm. journey. So and, incredibly, and it helps, it oh helps my goodness. so much, no matter what it is, what kind of grief it is, or anything in life. You know, human beings, we want to know that we're not alone. Yeah, in this, that's right. and that support is so wonderful. I can't even tell you how valuable mm. this was today. <laughs> You're incredible. wonderful. You're incredible. I'm so happy. Well, yeah. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate uh, <laughs> you both and and creating this. Uh, ongoing series of conversations at the sands of time and inviting COPE to be part of it and allowing me to share a bit about uh, the, the work that we do on behalf of the thousands of family members who have counted on us, do count on us, and inevitably will count on us tomorrow. So I, I really appreciate uh, the shared work and vision that we have. For people yeah. who are not as savvy, computer savvy, is there a phone number that they can call? Absolutely. And uh, okay. 
<laughs> so one way or another, people can connect with us using uh, technology, uh, <laughs> mail, whatever works. We're, we're uh, always accessible. Um, so the, the best number to reach us at if uh, someone is uh, calling, it's not a toll-free number. It's a local to Long Island number, but anyone can, uh, can phone us at 516-832-2671. And the website is copefoundation.org. Is there an email address if somebody yeah. wants to contact you? Uh, the uh, email to use to reach out is info, I-N-F-O, at copefoundation.org. Beautiful. Incredible and, work. And, and feel free to reach out to Lisa and I anytime and we'll connect you as well. Yeah. We can't thank you enough for what you do, Adam. Incredible yeah. work. And yeah, you changed lives. Do it alone. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. Definitely changing lives in the midst of one of the worst unimaginable things that that happens yeah. in life. Yeah. You know, yeah. unfortunately. But we appreciate you being here, Anna. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And good luck with the fundraiser. Thank that you. That you got much. going on. Yeah, always. I've attended a few of the online fundraisers that you have, and they were a lot of fun. I, I think we did what? We did a bingo once. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's all about the community experience of getting together, uh, sharing yeah. the work, uh, lifting up the stories of the the people who uh, connect with COPE, and then enlisting uh, the the valued support of donors and volunteers. So. You know what I enjoyed about the bingo? You know, you can see everybody on the screen and it wasn't just individuals. You know, you could see the kids and the family okay. and the whole family sitting there. And that was Very really special. kind of neat. Very special, yes. Yeah, the Very secret neat. of fundraising is to make it fun. Well said. <laughs> I have a not-for-profit <laughs> background. And when you start asking for money, it's not easy. But when you make it fun, people participate. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think if you have anything else, Adam, anything else you want to share? You, you've shared so much information with us today. Well, thanks for giving me the opportunity to, and uh, we'll stay connected in, uh, in the shared partnerships and work that we do together. So uh, I value you both. Absolutely. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. So okay. thank you again, and we'll be in touch. Okay. Yep. Thanks be again well. for all your good work. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.